This is Twit. Last Tuesday, in what had to be a, 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 I guess, a plain and stark run-up to Russia's designs on Ukraine, which, of course, there was some news about last night, multiple institutions, which are critical to Ukraine's military and economy, were hit with denial-of-service attacks. The attacks triggered, just because everyone's watching, I suppose, a great deal of global news and speculation, despite the fact that the impact of the attacks themselves was somewhat limited. The trouble is, the ramifications of such attacks are not. The attacks of um, the targets of the attacks were the internet presence of the armed forces of Ukraine, the Ministry of Defense, and the country's largest two commercial banks, which was considered to be systemically important to Ukraine's financial functioning. And these could very well have been just some, you know, some, some target scaling. We know that that's the nature of, of denial of service attacks. Like most of the world, I'm quite worried about what's going on over there. But as always, what interests us here is technology. Adam Myers, the senior VP of intelligence at CrowdStrike, said in an email to reporters at ThreatPost that the attacks consisted of a large volume of traffic, three orders of magnitude more than regularly observed traffic, with 99% of this traffic consisting of HTTPS requests. That caught my attention Because there are many implications there. First of all, HTTPS rides on top of TCP. TCP connections are established with a three-way handshake, whose purpose is to verify and establish a functioning two-way connection between the endpoints. As we know, both sides exchange randomly chosen 32-bit synchronization package, which will be used to number the data that they, the the number of the data bytes that they subsequently exchange and it's this three-way handshake that prevents ip address spoofing of tcp connections unlike with a udp query which is just a single packet it's not possible to spoof the ip of an https web query which runs over tcp and the second part of this is the https web query itself. Attacks are typically far more effective if they're able to exploit large asymmetries between the attacker and their target. In the case of UDP traffic, we've talked about the bandwidth amplification that can be created by many internet services. The simplest example is probably querying a DNS server where the query is small, but the reply is large. Size asymmetries like this are quite common on the Internet. If attackers can ask a short question of a publicly available Internet service using the UDP protocol, which only requires a single packet, they can spoof the source IP carried by that query packet to cause the reply to be sent to their targeted victim. In this way, a little bit of traffic generates a much larger attack. Of course, this form of asymmetry doesn't work for HTTPS, since the IP address of the endpoint generating the HTTPS query cannot be spoofed. But a far more damaging asymmetry does exist. A constant topic of this podcast is the fact that today's fancy websites are not built from simple static HTML pages previously written and stored on a mass storage device and then probably cached in RAM. Today's sites are not archives, they're applications. As such, incoming queries are examined and handled by software, typically Java, C Sharp, PHP, Python, Node.js, or perhaps Ruby on Rails. Several of those languages are neither multi-threaded nor particularly high performance. Many of them are interpretive. As a result, they don't scale well. 
To make matters worse, they typically read from and need to interpret page templates, which direct them in the formation of the page to assemble and return, which almost always necessitates multiple, if not many, queries to a back-end database. As an industry, we've built extremely complex and capable data-driven web applications. We've kept them understandable and maintainable by using templates and databases. But all of this elegant design has come at the high price of efficiency. As a result of many levels of interpretation and lookup, today's websites have extremely high computational and mass storage lookup costs per page. And that is the asymmetry that modern HTTPS query flooding attacks are leveraging. A botnet is needed to generate such attacks, since the attacker's IP address cannot be hidden, and there must be many tens of thousands of attacking IPs, otherwise the unspoofable by IPs of a few attackers can be trivially blocked by a firewall filter. But as we know, botnets consisting of many tens of thousands of previously compromised devices do exist. Many, in fact. And all of the flawed design IoT devices, which we also often talk about here, which continue to be casually connected to the Internet every day, just adds to that potential inventory. As we've noted before, the only real way to know how strong a botnet is, is to fire a test shot. What the world saw a week ago in Ukraine was an HTTPS query-capable botnet flexing its muscles. Uh, we may be seeing more of that in the future, and uh, nothing prohibits it from being aimed at any website where there is a high cost per page. Uh, the I know that... Um, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name... Um, uh, Cloudflare uh, have built some some specialty around protecting that kind of site. Uh, sometimes when I'm checking onto security sites, since security sites seem to often be an, 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 a, a DDoS attack target, um, I'll get this kind of this weird intercept page uh, from from Cloudflare you know, saying that they're verifying my browser or something, which is clearly a lot like a first stage intercept to say, okay, like we're, we're going to, you know, let this guy through or not. So anyway, uh, I, I have every expectation that, you know, if, I mean, everyone keeps saying that cyber warfare is, is, you know, like the next big thing. And if so, it's going to be botnets of this sort, not doing the old Scott, old style sin flooding, but probably bringing our websites down because it is so expensive now to, to produce a, 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 a single page to a visitor. If you're able to produce three orders of magnitude, greater traffic than a given site has been already been scaled to handle, uh, to, you know, it's gone. It's off the internet.